Alright, in this uh, video we're going to solve a problem that involves two vectors, um, and the problem is this. So, I want to find two vectors, a and b, um, such that the following things are true. So, the first thing I want is that um, a is going to be parallel to a particular given vector, and that vector is 8, 2. Um, a plus b is going to be 6, 5, um, and then also I want... Um, a and B to be orthogonal, which means they uh, form a right angle. Their dot product is zero. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, draw a little picture. So on this picture, I'm going to put uh, 8, 2, and 6, 5. So there's 8, 2. You can see I go over 8, I go up 2. Um, here's 6, 5. I went over 6, up 5. And now what I'll do is I'll sketch in these other vectors that I want to find. So A has to be parallel to um, the vector 8, 2. Um, and B has to be orthogonal to A, so it's also going to be orthogonal to A too. Um, so I'm trying to keep the colors consistent. So uh, that would be B, that would be A, and they're going to form that right angle right there. Alright, so what I want to do is try to solve this problem. So, let's copy the picture again. Um, and you'll notice I've added a little angle theta there um, that's between the vectors. Uh, now I'm calling them W and V. So it's between W and V. The reason I'm calling it W and V is that I'm going to do calculations kind of at the last possible step. I don't want the numbers in the way. Um, so the first thing I'll notice is that I have two vectors and I know how to find the angle between them so uh, or the cosine of the angle between them. So cosine of theta is going to be uh, w dot v over uh, the magnitude of w times the magnitude of v. Alright, so that's one way I can write the cosine of theta. But if you look, we also have a right triangle. So if I also add in uh, the names there, so uh, vector A and vector B, uh, the cosine, well, actually I don't really need B yet, but the uh, right triangle approach would give me that the cosine of theta is going to be the uh, magnitude of A over the magnitude of W, which gives you the length of the hypotenuse in that triangle. Okay, so uh, I have two things um, that are both equal to cosine of theta, so they must be equal to each other. So let's jot that down. So this is why we didn't want to use uh, any of the numbers right away. Let's see what we can work out first. So we get that, um, which means the magnitude of A, so I'm getting somewhere now, the magnitude of A is uh, W dot V over the magnitude of V. So now I actually, if I wanted to, I could calculate uh, the magnitude of A, so I'm going to do that. So the dot product of W and V is going to be uh, 6 times 8 plus 5 times 2 over the magnitude of V, which is the square root of 8 squared plus 2 squared. And that's going to clean up to give me uh, 58 over radical 68. Okay, so now I know the magnitude of A. So let's see what else we can do. So uh, let me copy all this over again. So I still have my picture. So I know the magnitude of A. Um, and then if you look, A and V are uh, in the same direction. Uh, which means that they must have uh, the same unit vector. So A over the magnitude of A is actually going to be equal to V over the magnitude of V. Right, so same direction, they have the same unit vector, that's a big idea. Um, which means I can find actually vector A now. So A is the magnitude of A, which I calculated, times the unit vector in the direction of V, which I can easily calculate also. So let's do that. So magnitude of A already found. And then uh, the unit vector for V it's just going to be uh, 8, 2 divided by the magnitude of V, which was radical 68. So what's nice is that radical 68 uh, has showed up twice, so I'm not going to have a messy radical in my answer. Um, work this out, which actually isn't really that bad because of the 50 part, I guess. Um, but everything there is clearly divisible by 4, so let's do that. If you can simplify things, it you know makes your calculations a little easier later on. All right, so I found vector A. Um, now I need to find vector B, but I'm not going to work very hard for that because uh, in the given information it said that A and B actually add up to this vector W that I've now defined, so 6, 5. So that means that the vector I just found plus B is 6, 5. And then I'm going to just subtract the vector A from both sides and uh, get that B is equal to negative 14 over 17, comma 56 over 17. You can confirm that on paper or with a calculator. And then to check this, um, it doesn't really make sense to add A and B together and see that you get 6, 5, because we did that um, as a part of the process. But what you could do is you can do the dot product of A and B. 
And if you do a dot b, you actually get zero. Um, and since you get zero, it means that they're orthogonal. And that means we got it right. So that's how I would do that problem. And I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.